into a larger entity. The Swiss used to fight the Roman Empire. They uh, resisted uh, the German Kaiser Empire for uh, about 800 years. More recently, they tried to keep independent from the European community. The Alborn is also a very old and primitive wind instrument, it may be as old as the didgeridoo. And the urge can be found in many cultures, a way to make the human voice grow stronger and carry over larger distances. This mosaic was found in Western Switzerland. Uh, it's almost 2,000 years old and it shows a, a herdsman playing a curved horn. Also, animal horns were used to blow. Uh, the tips were cut off and the sound would carry for uh, large distances. The bullhorn was also used as a battle horn, used in battles to rally the troops and to frighten the enemy. Um, the legendary Uri Stier horn was the horn, uh, according to legend, of a huge bull who fought a dragon and killed the dragon, but was also killed in this in this battle. And this Uri Stier horn was used by the old Eidgenossen troops in their many fights against the Habsburg Empire. Many herdsmen. Shepherds, cowherds would create instruments with material they found in their surroundings. Like this example is a horn made of willow bark. Here you see uh, pine trees growing on a steep slope. So the bottom would be curved because of the pressure of wind and snow. This curve would serve as the end piece of the horn and it was found to be uh, acoustically uh, very, very good. I quote from a book, the first book that's written in English about the Alphorn that uh, was issued last year by Charlotte Wignau. She wrote, she writes about the acoustic uh, preference of this curve. The krump, or the end curve, of the alphorn makes the overtones coincide exactly with the theoretical harmonic line. This is not the case for any other conical musical instruments, such as trumpets or clarinets, which differ from it. So, it uh, creates a warm and pleasant sound like no other. The, the elf horn or alpine horn is uh, built from pine or Swiss stone pine. Swiss stone pine is a very special wood which grows only in the Alps up from 1500 meters to two and a half. Uh, it grows very, very slowly and uh, this wood smells also very good and it uh, makes a warm, white tone. The tone of the pine horn is uh, a bit harder, but uh, it's uh, also a bit preciser when you play it. Uh, the horn is uh, made, handmade, um, and 
most of the constructors use a lot of machines just to spare time if they build, if they build it. One makes them by CNC machine. And the time to build an Alpone is about 80 hours. That means more or less two weeks work. I'd like to move on to how the Alpone originally was used. The Alpone originally was not a, an artistic uh, instrument, but it was used as a tool in everyday work. The Alpine herdsmen would call, would blow their horn to attract the cattle and uh, make them return to the stable to be milked. It would be played in the open generally, uh, but its sound would travel as far as 8 kilometers, thus saving the herdsmen a lot of labor work. And uh, it's still the case that cows Cattle animals will react to the sound of the alphorn as I myself could uh, find many times. It is often said that an alphorn was used to communicate with other people, but there's no confirmation of that. I, I'd rather think it's a romantic notion to, to call the alphorn the mobile phone of earlier times. I'd like to proceed to the original type of Alphorn melodies. They are called the Kyrayen or Kao Po. The Kyrayen derives of the vocal sounds the, the herdsmen made to attract the, the, the animals, like Yo! So uh, people would improvise in that manner and nevertheless they had a, a structure of certain parts that would uh, figure in the Kyrai. So first there is the, often there's the invocation part. There's like a introductory melody uh, compared to uh, sacred music to evoke the goodwill of, of God or the spirits to give their blessing to the animals and to the alpine area. It would sound like that. This would be followed by the actual Kyrayen, the attracting call, uh, luring the animals. This would go like that. Or some variation. motives that could be prolonged. If, if you had a large herd, you would play longer the same uh, phrases. The Alphorn is an instrument belonging to the family of labraphones. That means uh, the sound is produced by the lips, uh, like the trumpet, for instance, the trombone, the tuba, the horn, the French horn. So actually the Alphorn, although made of wood, belongs to the family of brass wind instruments. And as I mentioned, the sound is produced by making the lips vibrate. You, you put the lips together and you press some air out between and produce this vibrating sound. When you apply the mouthpiece to the lips, you have to be aware not to put too much pressure so the lips are still able to vibrate, to move. 
but with the mouthpiece, the, the air stream is, is channeled into, into this, into this uh, area from where it will proceed into the horn. And inside the horn, there are the, the curve of the, of the vibration of the sound and its overtones. That means there are certain sound waves produced by this vibration. And those sound waves um, translate into certain notes which form the, the natural scale that is playable on the Alphorn. Um, there was also a, a, a melody, also a slower melody, again to, to end the, the cow call, the kyurai, and, and in this concept every player would improvise as he wished. From around 1750, the function of the Alphorn uh, started to change. Inspired by the philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau, there was the Back to Nature movement. Upper-class intellectuals became aware of the rural cultural heritage. Folk tales and folk songs were collected and for the first time Alphorn melodies were noted. At the same time, the Alphorn lost its original relevance in everyday work as less cattle was held in lonesome elevated Alps and the cheese-making facilities were centralized in the valleys. The romantic notion of the Alphorn as documented in paintings and enthusiastic reports by artists and academic travelers was based not on reality but on wishful thinking. Meanwhile, the use of the Alphorn was dramatically declining and several times the initiative to preserve the Alphorn from disappearing entirely came from urban class, upper class exponents, professors, artists, clergymen and patronizing politicians there is at least a dozen, uh, a dozen uh, times it is recorded such initiatives happening between 1800 and 1900. Let me sum up now the changes of the function of the Alphorn that have happened uh, until about 1800, that is in the last 220 years. First, the Alphorn as embodiment of the natural way of living. When uh, Europe grew more urban and the start of industrialization happened, uh, the way of living of the rural, urban, mountain regions was deemed the natural way of living. Also in art, the Alphorn would symbolize nature as you can hear in Beethoven's Sixth Symphony when Beethoven used some Alphorn motifs to evoke the nature. Uh, Johannes Brahms even used an Alphorn melody that he heard in the Berner Oberland in 1868 in his first symphony in the fourth movement uh, when he had it played by trombones. This melody he wrote on a postcard and sent it to his friend Clara Schumann and later in the symphony music it looked like that. The second function the Alphorn took on was uh, for tourism. The, the traveling artists and academic intellectuals can be perceived as the first wave of tourism in uh, the Alpine region and the clever Swiss they sure knew how to give them what they expected. Folk songs and Alphorn performance. The next function is begging. Begging for money. As industrialization also created an impoverished rural class, 
uh, some turns to playing music in the streets of the cities or in tourist areas. The musical quality of the performances was often very poor and led to complaints in parliaments of cities in Switzerland. Uh, when industrialization happened in Switzerland, uh, the society changed from an agricultural country to a more industrialized uh, country where many people lost their means of earning uh, in, the, in the agriculture, in rural regions and sought for work in urban areas, working in factories, but there was also uh, a number of people growing poor because of the change in society. And as in other countries, uh, in other parts of the world, uh, music was always uh, a means of making some money for poor people. Also you have, for instance, many blind musicians, because this was one thing they still could do to earn some money. And so poor people who used to be uh, farmers or working uh, in the rural area uh, would out of necessity try to make some money by playing music. And music that they knew was music played by the Alphorn. In up to 1950, the quality of the horn was not at the same level as lately. The tools got better in the last 50 years. The experience uh, was not there before. So many horns were uh, of of a lesser quality. Also, people who were in need of making money to survive, they did not have the chance to study music. They just learned by themselves. Uh, they didn't know uh, every aspect that was important to play music on a trained level, but they just played out of necessity. So sometimes they uh, didn't know much, but they had no other opportunity to, to make some money. So they played as they could, and some didn't play very well then. At the end of the 1800s, um, or during the 1800s, uh, there was also the function of national, creating a national identity for Switzerland. After the Napoleonic era, 1798 to 1803, the Swiss needed some new identity. Alphorn music and folk art served to bridge the gap between uh, urban and rural parts, also prepared the mind setting that led to the founding of the modern Swiss Republic in 1848. By the end of the 19th century, uh, the function of mental defense became more important. In that time, Europe was very, very unstable. Nations were created, nations disappeared from the map, and the multilingual Switzerland needed a national culture. In this context, the Alport was used as a introverted side, uh, isolationist way of looking at national culture. So what followed was uh, the next function, I call this the exploiting of the Alphorn connotation. The Alphorn was discovered as a means of uh, pursuing other intentions like commercial reasons, selfish reasons. The cliches associated with the Alphorn were employed to promote tourism or to advertise 
products made in Switzerland from chocolate to industrial machinery. It also has been up to now used by conservative political exponents to uh, underline their ideas that to pretend that Switzerland, even in this past post-industrial digital era, is still an agricultural state with the same sociological morals and values that were there 200 years ago. For the last part, I'd like to uh, talk about the function that is closest to my heart, the musical and creative function of the Alphorn. Since its inclusion into the Swiss Yodeling Federation, the playing of the Alphorn was strictly regulated. For instance, multi-part harmonic playing was not, was not authorized until 1973. The first female Alphorn player was also accepted in 1973 to the Yodeling Federation. But starting in the 70s, uh, Alphorn was uh, discovered by people outside of the organized uh, playing and it started to show up in classical music even in jazz, and, and the, the global folk movement also took notice. With its unique sound and its special series of notes, which does not correspond with the diatonic or chromatic uh, scales that we normally have in Western music, the Alphorn today is an attractive means of artistic expression. Freed from ideological barriers, it presents a huge field that has yet to be explored. To me, being a trained jazz musician, the occupation with my cultural roots and with the music tradition of my country where I was born is a, a core intention of my artistic uh, striving. The motto, to conserve Conserve means carrying on the flame and not guarding the ashes, may sum up my intentions. With this mindset, I am permitted, no, it is asked for, it, I, it asks for experiments in different styles and settings, in always respecting the tradition and honoring the traditional way of playing. It allows to it allows global interaction, come into contact with uh, other cultures. It is my belief that music is the true universal language, which is uh, understood all over. It transcends geographical or language barriers. Um, I think there is no more recent proof or better proof than this event today, 2014, here in Xiangyu. Thank you for your kind attention.